if you are not yet in the writing phase and you know a friend or a classmate or a colleague that is in report writing or dissertation writing, please share this video with them, with them and save them the hassle of not knowing what to do when it's getting closer to their writing period. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Alice Rita. To all new and returning subscribers, you are welcome to my channel. So in my video today, I'm going to be sharing with you the vi valuable tips that I got from people that finished their PhD earlier than myself. So when I was in my third year, I began to ask the graduating PhD student, what are the things that assisted you to finish on time? What are the things that you know now that you wished you had known earlier before starting to, before you submitted your thesis? And I've made a list, which I'm going to run quickly so that I don't take your time. If you're in your third year of your PhD or you are getting towards the completion of your PhD, it is vital that you should make an outline of what your thesis is going to look like. And by outline, I mean you should break down your research projects into sections, subsections. In the UK, your PhD is expected to have an introduction on a final discussion. You're expected to have a, a mater material and method and you are expected to have, I think, about three results chapter minimum. So... With the three results chapter, each chapter is usually written as a whole, uh, like a whole story on its own. It has each chapter has its own, the the results chapter has its own introduction, the methodology, the discussion, and in the final discussion, you are going to combine the results from the three different sections into a single story. So an outline is very important. If you're in your third year of PhD, you are at advantage here because I made my outline in my third year. So towards the end of my third year, I generated an outline. I was expecting I would write six results chapter, uh, six chapters in total, which is the three general chapter of introduction, methods, and discussion. I thought I was going to be writing three result chapter, but there were results that couldn't fit into any of the chapters. So that's made me to have four result chapter. So if you're able to write down your outline now, you're able to then figure out which figures you need for each of the uh, for each of the sections. So having an outline help you to direct your final year of PhD. The final year of your PhD could be stressful if you don't have an outline that you've already generated in your third year. If you don't have an outline for your figures that you need for each of the section, so you're going to be stressed at the last part of the PhD. When you have an outline. The way the outline can help you with the writing is that when it's getting closer for you to then write, you can then break that outline into different tasks. So imagine you have a chapter one, or let's assume you have chapter three that has section 3.1, and under 3.1 section, there are subsections of 3.11, 3.112, that type of sections. You can break each of them into a single to-do list, and there are three apps that I think are very important for you to have during the end of your PhD. And the first one is if you are using an Android phone, there's something called Google Task. So with the Google Task, so I put each of these section as a single task, just the way it's arranged in my document. And there's this feeling of satisfaction that you feel each time you click a task that has been completed. Immediately, the Google Task remove it from the list of your task and move it to a completed section. So that app is really important. If you're not the mobile type that loves to press app, <laughs> that loves to use apps on the phone, if you're more of a computer person, you can actually use Microsoft To Do. So Microsoft To Do is uh, another task app that can help you to cancel out your completed task. And it can also, you can set dates for the deadline for each of the tasks. So this puts you on tag on points, or, or should I say on targets so that you're not behind. So make sure to set clear and realistic goals for your writing. So each of those tasks, some days you'll be very productive that you will rule out about fourth on the list. And there are days that you will rule out just a single task. On those days, don't feel pressurized. What you can do on days that you're not productive is that you should use the evening section of that day to generate figures that you need for the next day writing. And the second thing you should know for your writing of your this dissertation is that all these are created equal, but productivities for each day are not equal. So there will be day that you will be overachieving, that you can roll out about five or four different tasks from your to-do list. And there are days that even to write a sentence will be very hard on you. I learned that in the third year of my PhD from people that finished their PhD, they explained to, already to me that 
there are days that I will not feel like writing, so I should not be too hard on myself. It's normal for everyone to feel that way. And on days that I don't feel like writing, I spend it in generating figures for the next chapter that I was going to write. So please, on days that you don't feel pr productive, don't feel like you are a failure. You are not a failure. It's just that the brain needed a, uh, uh, the brain needed you to take a break. But because we are working under time pressure, we are feeling like, oh, we need to get things done every day. Our brains need break. The third thing that you need to know is that get ready. Sometimes your computer might fail you. And it's not all of us, it's not everyone that will experience this. Very few people will experience their computer crashing during the writing period. This is why it's important that when you want to write your reports, it's best that you keep the reports your report saved in online storage system. For instance, you can decide to store your data on Dropbox. You can decide to store your data on Microsoft um, OneDrive. So personally, for my writing, because I was working with large image files, I saved every process data from my computer straight into my OneDrive app. So the OneDrive folder on the computer, I make sure I saved it directly so I can access it anywhere in the anywhere I can access it anywhere. It doesn't have to be on my computer. So if the computer fail me, all the data that I've processed, and this I learned because I was using an hard drive. During the last part of my third year, my five terabytes worth of data was lost because my hard drive fell and it was not recoverable. I sent it to a company that could recover it. They changed some parts that was broken and they couldn't still ref um, save my data. So imagine, I lost five terabytes worth of data that has been processed. But the advantage that I had was that some of my data, I've already moved them to the cloud. So in the research park where I work, we have an online data storage where everyone is to deposit their raw files of every data that is generated. So every experiment that I've conducted in the last three years, before that drive got broken, everything were in the cloud. And because I was silly to not have made a backup of them, I spent the first six months of my fourth year PhD analyzing data all over, sleepless nights. During those period, my colleagues can tell you that I was like a zombie. So please don't make a mistake of not backing up your computer. And also, it might seem like it will cost you money to get uh, to pay nine points, nine pound, I think, or nine dollar, nine pound every month to Dropbox during your writing period. It's a nine pound that is worth spending because if anything go wrong, you can always get back a previous version of your document that you are writing. You are at peace that if the computer decides not to wake up the following day, you can always just log into another computer to continue writing. So back up and use online storage uh, drive. The fourth on my list is lack of motivation. This lack of motivation goes very well with the second step, the second point I discussed about all this are made equal, but productivity are not made equal. So on this side, you feel you are not motivated to write. Don't be hard on yourself. Rather, spend that day to do things that will make your brain happy. If it's to go on a sightseeing, go for a walk or have coffee with friends, do that. And in the evening, the guilt of not writing anything during the day will make your brain to be productive to write at least a paragraph before going to bed. So don't say because you've not written anything throughout the day, then keep a sleepless night. You don't want to break your sleeping uh, cycle. Once you do, it's difficult to recover. And the fifth is to take time off. <laughs> Her brain is not wired like a work clock. Our brain needs rest. So when you've written a whole chapter, take two days off before starting the next chapter so that you feel mentally prepared. And it's best also each time you finish writing a chapter to give to your friends to read for you. If you don't have friends that can read for you, arrange meeting with your supervisor for them to read your your this chapter you've written so i was luck i was fortunate to have a supportive supervisor so at the end of each writing of the, each chapter i gave him the the each chapter which he then read he, he put his comments and suggestions it's important that you do the correction for that immediately so that you don't make similar mistakes in the next chapter and the sixth thing is to know that when it is time to submit some things will definitely go wrong. Like your the styles of writing can just, out of nowhere, disappear or rearrange itself. Don't panic. 
in my in my video, I have some of the tips that will help you on setting up your writing style, on tracking the style you are working with, and the minor errors of maybe the figures showing in table of contents and every other thing. You will find them in my tutorial because this introduces the errors that I encountered during my writing and I've created a video to document each of them. I hope you find this video useful. If you are not yet in the writing phase and you know a friend or a classmate or a colleague that is in report writing or dissertation writing, please share this video with them, with them and save them the hassle of not knowing what to do when it's getting closer to their writing period. So I hope this video helped you and until next time, I remain Alice Rita. Shall we then call me Dr. Alice? And thank you for watching today's video. Bye.